This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicke and as always I'm in, a hot, I'm in a hot room with Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. Hello. Any, any room with Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart's a hot room, oh, Dave. You're, you're you know the rules. Yeah, that's what they call us, the sauna twins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can, thank God you towel. No, I, just, I, well, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant um, we're, uh, we're, we're both very sweaty people. We are. And if you're in an enclosed room with us, uh, you know, there will be a sauna effect, as Jess was saying. Yeah. But um, it's a medical condition and we are very self-conscious about yeah. it. Sorry to bring it up. So I would appreciate you not staring at us like that. Yeah. I mean, there's sweat patches and then there's sweat bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Your body it's really is a sweat more patch. like a dry patch. Yeah, there is. yeah, exactly. It's easy to focus on the dry part <laughs> yeah. of your body. Which weirdly is behind my knees. Yeah, what? Very dry. My <laughs> bit's my mouth. And you made me, <laughs> and you, both of you made me touch them. Yeah. yeah. Just, just to prouve it. Yeah. Very touch weird. my mouth. Touch my mouth now. Touch it. Touch the back of my knee <laughs> whilst touching his mouth. Aww. That was said. Yeah. That was said, and I regret it. And I am I uh, am such a people pleaser. I did it. Yeah, you did do it. But on the way across the room, you did slip over in our puddles. <laughs> <laughs> we are basically puddle people now. Yeah. Puddle Say people. that five times. We are basically puddle, yeah. puddle people. Puddle, 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 puddle people. Puddle people. Puddle people. I did it. I set myself well a challenge and I did it. Well done. Ah, new year, new me. <laughs> oh, welcome to 2018, baby. The year of Jess. Oh. Yeah. Which is bad news for Matt and I. This is my year. Then again, every year Matt says it's going to be a good year for you, Bob. Every year. Never been wrong. <laughs> Never said anything about my years. Yeah. Well. Well. Take from that what you will. Sit and wait. It's coming one day. I, I just don't want you to say it's going to be a bad year. Yeah, all day. Keep that to yourself. Yeah. This is not your year. I'd rather not know. Yeah. You're even Stephen, Dave. You're going to have another pretty all right year. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. I'm going to have another ripper. Damn it. <laughs> you can watch from the sidelines, you lonely little prick. Oh, God, all right. I'm having an all right year means being a lonely little prick. <laughs> Oh, God, a bad year's going to be really bad. <laughs> Matt, what's your prediction for your year? My year's going to be awful. <laughs> <laughs> Another awful year for Matt Another Stewart. Another awful year. <laughs> Sad sack Stewart. <laughs> now nah, we're all going to have a great year. I've got a real bloody good feeling about it. Dave, you're going to win Best Newcomer at the Fringe um, uh, Society. Fringe Society, Jess, you're yep. going to eat a new hat. I'm going to eat a new hat. I'm going to wear my face like a crown. <laughs> So it's going to be a good year. And that's why your year's going to be awful. It's a very painful hat. <laughs> <laughs> he has to pull his face up above his head. <laughs> and wear it. <laughs> he's, he's trying. trying he's trying now. <laughs> and he's pretty, he's close it's to not succeeding. Bad. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Well, you know, I've still got 11 and a half months. So. Yeah. God, you're already, yeah, I reckon you'll get there by eight. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last four months, I just get to enjoy it. <laughs> Think of a new challenge. <laughs> yeah, get started on 2019's errands. <laughs> Should probably be putting the face back on. Yeah, yeah. wearing your face as yeah. a face. Appointments with plastic surgeons. One thing we should mention is, as announced on last week's episode, that our Melbourne Comedy Festival shows are now on sale. Ooh, Ooh mama. mama. Ooh, mama. We're doing four Saturday afternoons at the European Beer Cafe every week at 4.30pm, and you can buy tickets now. The link is in the description of this episode. And if you use the word, the code word BOP, you'll get a discount on our full price tickets as well as season pass tickets. You guys make all of my dreams come true. Is, is that case sensitive, Dave? Uh, let's make it all lowercase. Probably should have said that. Maybe I'll make two B O P capitals. Also B O P, no capitals. But if you want to mix them together, you're on your fucking own. <laughs> How about that? It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. Mm. I'm so pumped for doing these live shows again. Oh, um, Melbourne. Oh, the hundredth episode was so fun. It's the same venue as that. So if you came to that, or if you missed out because it was fully sold out, this is your chance to come four times. Four yeah. times. Come on, and each show is going to be different. So uh, you should definitely come four times. And we might even have some special guests. Who knows? We actually haven't discussed that. I genuinely had to cut out about half an hour from the Brisbane live show of us just having fun in the room that didn't translate 
Oh, was that when I was in the audience <laughs> handing out Skittles and then throwing Skittles into my own mouth? Yeah, that and was then throwing fun. Them Skittles at Dave. Attempted to throw them into my mouth, none of which made it into my mouth. That was not on That was my one part. of the parts that, yeah, that was about five minutes that I had oh, to cut fuck, out. Fuck, that was fun though. What about the bit where I put drops in my cider yeah. and made everybody sing? Yeah, no, I took that out as oh, well. Oh, that was good stuff. Now it just sounds like I've taken out everything fun you mm. did, but it just didn't quite make sense. Mm. Yeah. So I'm saying you got to, if you can... If you're in the room, you'll you'll catch more funny things. Sorry. Just doing some of her prop comedy. I'm so I'm all that prop. I also just remember that I drank from someone's drink. You did. That's very. I would never usually do that because I'm a bit of a germaphobe. But you know what? When the comedy comes, you know I stop thinking about meninger cockle and I. <laughs> I just I'll drink from anyone's drink. So if you want that to happen, please come along. Yeah. If you yeah, if you want to have some of your drinks stolen, yeah, come to our show. But it is a lot of fun, and uh, we norm- as it is at a bar, we normally hang around, have a drink afterwards, and uh, you know, yeah, this will be no congr- exception. Congratulate each other. <laughs> a lot of patting on the back. Yeah, lots of shaking hands. It really is. It's a, a lot of consoling. Going, yeah. Hey, hey. hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Your report wasn't that bad. <laughs> Matt, come on. It'll, it's, all, it's all about the edit. It's all about the edit. We'll edit <laughs> we can out, save it. We can save this. We'll, we'll fix it in post. We'll edit out all those awkward silences. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put in laughs. Yeah, I can, I've downloaded a laugh track from YouTube. <laughs> it's just I've, I've gotten the two seconds in between on Seinfeld when no one's actually talking. So I've just gotten the laugh bit. Sure, you can hear a bit of slap bass in there, but who cares? <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, the tickets, ticket links in the description of this episode. And we'll also put the uh, links to Matt and my shows at the Melbourne Comedy Festival as well. So come along to that, please. Yes, my show's on every night apart from probably Wednesdays. Monday. <laughs> Mondays, fuck. I'm, I'm not but even not- producing your show, and I know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a little while away. Uh, yeah, every every night apart from Mondays, which is when Dave's show's on. So you can see my show six days a week and then Dave's on the other. And on Saturdays, see... See both. Be, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, Matt, I'll uh, wrap this up and um, <laughs> keep going. We'll keep going. Don't worry about that. Oh, just my uh, <laughs> admin just imploded in my head. <laughs> hey, Dave, what's this show about again? Mm. Uh, well, if you've just joined us for the first time or the first time this year, why did you not listen last week? That's the question. But anyway. Yeah, you missed my great banana logic bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great bit. Stand out. <laughs> God, don't make that into a do-go animation. You didn't edit it out, did you, Jess? Or maybe you did. Oh, maybe you did. <laughs> have, you, have, have you not listened back to it yet? No, I haven't. Listened. I have, oh. and I heard it in there, and it made me laugh. <laughs> it was really funny. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. It, I'm glad. It's thanks for leaving in, Jess. It was pretty risque, but I'm glad you left it in. Yeah, offensive for some. Yeah, hilarious for most. Yeah. Blasphemous, some would even say. No, mm. not blasphemous. Mm. Not that blasphemous. <laughs> but still pretty blasphemous. Anyway, sure. Dave, what is this show? Uh, so one of us is going to do a uh, report on a topic that's been suggested by a listener, and it is my turn. <gasps> Yay! So our first report of the year for myself. These are our favourites. Yes. Dave is by far the best. Well, this is, according to us. Chuck out the rest. This is our fourth calendar year we've Dave, done reports. Who's, who's, what? Yeah, because it started in 15, 16, 17, now we're in 18. Oh. Could us go fourth calendar year? Great technicality. I know because we did start in November. <laughs> yeah, still, let's take it. Who's your favourite report giver, Dave? Yeah, Dave. Well, I'd hate to go against the status quo. I also <laughs> enjoy my reports. <laughs> that but sounds about right. That yeah. works out well. All right, bless so me to get on. Okay. Sorry, bless, bless you, Jess. Jess. Do it myself. Bless, okay. bless this Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Says that on your welcome map. Bot, be blessed. <laughs> All right, so I've got a question here to get us onto the to- onto topic. Yes. My question for both of you. Oh, my God. Oh, he's opening it up to oh. the room. Hey, pointing, you're opening it up. You pointed it at out. Sassily as well, which I liked. Yeah. Who? Oh, it's a person. Or a band. Ooh. Shit. Okay, I'll let him continue before I make these assumptions. <laughs> Who mm-hmm. rocked the most famous monobrow of the 20th century? Oh. It's the Oasis lead singer, <laughs> mm-hmm. Liam Gallagher. Oh, that's, that's right. Liam's the lead singer, but Noel wrote the songs. Is it Liam Gallagher? It is. the guy. Go- it's Liam Gallagher, and I know this because his pictures are on all the Mexican restaurants I go to. 
Am I getting a couple of people confused? Is you, it uh, is it Maggie Simpson's enemy? Oh yes, oh, yes. It is not the evil baby. Mm, interesting. Simpsons. Is it Frida Kahlo? It is Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. That's who I think has got the best monorail, most famous monorail of the 20th century. And I've chosen this topic out of the hat because I'm going to New Mexico next week, baby. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And a couple of times I've, I've been on holidays and I've got excited about things while I'm there. Like when I was in uh, Stockholm, I saw the bank where the Stockholm syndrome thing came from. And then we did a, a bonus. That is cool. We did a bonus. Pa- well, I was like, God, I didn't really thought about that. And then I did, we did the bonus Patreon report on it. But this time, when I go to Mexico City next week, I want to know a bit about it before I go there. So I decided to pick a Mexican topic. Okay, cool. That's real smart. You know what I had for dinner this afternoon? <gasps> AKA lunch. <laughs> A burrito. Oh, mm. a burrito. A burrito. Well, I, I did message both of you and told you to have Mexican cuisine to get ready for this topic. You did? I, did. I didn't that get was, that message. That was a bad idea in uh, this small hot room. I regret nothing. Just trying to create a little bit of piece of Mexico right here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a little piece of Mexico. Uh, this was suggested by uh, Hannah, who entered it into the new hat, which we've got a, like a, a little form you can fill out now. And uh, so thank you for doing that, Hannah. Or she's at Cider Oath on Twitter. Ooh, Cider fan. Or she's on an oath to never d- uh, drink cider. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Respect, Hannah. Yeah. So do you guys know much about Frida Kahlo? I know no. that she is a Mexican artist. Oh, that's good stuff. I know that she's a revered. Mm, a revered Mexican artist. And I know that her picture is in... A lot of Mexican restaurants around Melbourne. I know that a, a girl that I work with has her tattooed on her arm. Really? It's quite a beautiful tattoo. Is she a feminist icon? Yeah, she's an icon for many um, sort of marginalised groups. Oh. So she's big in the LGBTI community, big in the uh, with people with disabilities and stuff because of things that happened to her, her in her life, oh. which we will discover. Okay. All right. Well, I but mean, so she's an icon for many, many, many. All right. We could continue to ask questions, or, we or just find out. Dave can just start the report, and then we'll know for sure. Matt's just finishing that crunchy, crunchy burrito. Nachos? Yeah, a little, little after dinner nacho. <laughs> <laughs> so they do it in Mexico, baby. Also, I've been researching. Yeah, mm. you'll soon find out. All right, Frida Kahlo was born on July the sixth. 1907, in her parents' house known as La Casa Azul, or the Blue House. Oh, oh that's so cute. Like, they're in the big blue house. Yeah, that's right. And it's actually... Um, isn't there a, isn't there, wasn't there a paint? No, what was the um, Dutch I'm painter's blue and house? Da, 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 oh, Van Gogh. Was Van Gogh. He's the, the yellow house. Oh, the yellow house. Wow, well, that was a fucking totally different primary colour. I should put these shapes over somewhere else. <laughs> so you... Stop eating them. Yeah, no, um, this is actually the third in the triptych of uh, reports I've done on, on painters. Oh. oh. First episode, Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, we remember. That we had Van Gogh. He lived in the red house. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Van Gogh in the yellow. Mm-hmm. Frida in the blue house, which is uh, actually the house, the blue house or La Catha Athul is now where you can go. It's a museum. Oh, cool. Sick. About her. So you're going to get there? I'm really hoping to go there. Awesome. Uh, her full name, according to her birth certificate, because uh, often people with Spanish influence names have many, many names. Magdalena Carmen Frida Carlo y Calderon. Oh, I like it. Uh, at the time, the Blue House was on the outskirts of Mexico City in the small town of Coyoacan. Her father was Carl Wilhelm Carlo. He was born in Germany, and he hated Carl his... Carlo. That's right, Carl Carlo. Wilhelm. No, Carlo. no, no. Carl Carlo. Carl Carl. Low. I love it. You love that? I'm afraid it's about to change because oh. he's born in Germany, but he hated his stepmother so much that when he was 19, he left Germany and sailed alone to Mexico just to get away, where he changed his name to the more Mexican sounding Guillermo. Oh, that's better. Fuck, that is good, though. That's a pretty good name. Yeah, that's a great name. That's fun to say. But Carl Carlo is also fun to say. Mm. I, know, I like that. You a can lot. understand why I'm conflicted here now. Yes. I thought, well, I'm pretty relieved because when Dave said, you said you love his name mm. and Dave said that's about to change, yeah. I'm like, oh, what has this German guy done? <laughs> right, no, no. <laughs> the name is changing. Right. He's, he's fine. He's, he's fine. 
Okay. Uh, Guillermo suffered from epilepsy and was a photographer and became well known for his portraits of famous Mexicans, including the then Presidente. Presidente. El Presidente. El Presidente. Which is kind of uh, cool because he sort of arrived in Mexico with nothing and within sort of 10 years he was taking photos of very famous people. So yeah. he did very well for himself. Uh, he also took photos of himself, including a full nude body shot. How? Where he's facing away from the camera. <laughs> oh, thank God. And despite the fact that you, you, can't, you can see his ass but not his junk, in 1892 this was considered scandalous and he had a bit of controversy because It would have been better if it was full frontal and he's just standing there with his hands on his <laughs> hips like... Mm-hmm. Check it. Guillermo. <laughs> <laughs> I am Guillermo. This is my junk. <laughs> <laughs> El junkie. <laughs> Junko. <laughs> he was. <laughs> that's actually a good name. <laughs> he was a big influence on young Frida, and his self portraits with uh, photographs led the way for his daughter's painted self portraits that would make her famous one day. Mm. I read in a lot of places that Frida was his favourite child. Oh, brutal. Brutal for the others, but not for her. Yeah, no, good call. But brutal if he's admitted that. Absolutely, you can have a favourite, but don't say it out loud. You know, like I've got a favourite of you two, but I don't say it. Oh, yeah. All right, Matt's (laughs) like good, and I'm like fucking tell me, bitch. (laughs) I think that I think that says more Mm. than you need to know, Mm. Dave. I mean, I have a favourite parent. You do, and a favourite sibling by default. But I don't have either of those. You have two, (laughs) two parents though, so you have a favourite. Wow. So you've gone through every scenario of your if you can save one person from drowning, who you save? Yeah. What if? What about if you package all three together? Okay. So can you rank them one to three? You can save two, but not three. Yeah, I can rank them one to three. Wow, I couldn't. I couldn't. Three siblings and two parents, and I'd I'd put them all equal first. That's interesting. That Sounds like, like your family's all gonna drown. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the most romantic way to go. <laughs> oh, all together. Uh. All together now. No, no, no. <laughs> I love them so much. I'm gonna get a bigger boat. Oh. Is that a Jaws reference? That was on TV the other night. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Remember that Jaws reference where they were talking about love? <laughs> and saving everyone. We're going to need a bigger boat. For love. For love. And that's My how the- love is a big boat. Everyone get in and let's <laughs> sail into the sunset. Come on, big sharky boy. <laughs> we're all going to Tinseltown. <laughs> Those improv classes were not wasted on you. Come on, shark here, boy. It was, yeah. it was like I was in a in a boat with you. Yeah. 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 There you go. I felt the fins. You're in my love boat. You ride in my love boat every day, Dave. I think you've seen the love boat, but not yours. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's happened. <laughs> um, Guillermo, back to him. His, his father and, of course, Frida's grandfather was a painter, so art ran in the family. Mm. Uh, Frida's mother Matilda was of a uh, primarily, in, uh, well, she was primarily indigenous, but also a bit of Spanish descent. She was a devoutly Catholic woman. She married Guillermo shortly after his first wife died during the birth of their second daughter. Uh, their marriage, this is Matilda and Guillermo, was uh, reportedly unhappy. Frida often remarked that her mother did not love her father, and this uh, may have been the case. Matilda grieved her whole life for her first love, who she saw commit suicide. Oh, it's a very Sad. Uh, but together, Matilda and Guillermo had uh, four more daughters, the third of which was Frida. So uh, she grew up with four older sisters and one younger sister and talked about how she grew up in a family of women. Wow, that's interesting. I, yeah. I assumed with the uh, the favourite, she'd either be the oldest or the youngest, right? Yeah, but she's second youngest. Yeah, that really means that she was just better than the others. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, how many, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many other Carlos uh, hung around Mexican restaurants in Melbourne? Mm. Great point. It says a lot. Says Imagine how many Carlos are in Mexican restaurants in Mexico, or as they would call them, restaurants. Oh, I never thought about it like that. <laughs> mm, mm. What we call Mexican cuisine, they call cuisine. What? What? Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. speak in French? You don't have to <laughs> specify. And what if you want a croissant? You're going to need to go elsewhere. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm assuming cuisine's a French word. It probably isn't, probably. is not Probably. It? it sounds French. It does sound French. <laughs> And in the end, isn't that what really matters? <laughs> You're quite defensive there. It does sound it. No, no, no one called you on no it. No one ca- It's fine. I was just ready in case someone was straight on their phone on Twitter. You slapped the phone out of their hand. <laughs> Look, guys, I assume it's French. If it's not, I don't want to know. <laughs> That's about right. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, when Frida was three years old in 1910, the Mexican Revolution began and kicked off 10 years of civil war. The revolution involved a long and bloody struggle again among several factions in constantly shifting alliances. In Frida's writing, she reflected that her mother would usher her and her sisters into the house as gunfire broke out in the streets of the poor neighbourhood she lived in. Wow. Occasionally, men would leap over the walls into their... So they've got, got a, a walled uh, garden mm-hmm. in the middle of their backyard. And uh, in the middle of their backyard, it was their backyard. Interesting. Men would leap over the walls into their backyard and sometimes their mother would prepare a meal for the hungry revolutionaries. Oh. Oh. I saw that going a different way. The meal was laced with poison. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> After several changes in leadership and lots of backstabbing amongst leaders, the revolution ultimately ended in the end of the uh, 30-year dictatorship of Porifiro Diaz in Mexico and the establishment of a constitutional republic. They started wearing um, armour on their backs. Oh. Can't get stabbed that way, can that's you? That's real smart. Yeah, just their backs. That's, and that's how the revolution ended. Mm. Wow. Is that what? true? That's true. What? Dave? Huh? Looks like the report to er has become the report E. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. I know I know I know some stuff. You know your Mexican Revolution facts. Yeah. Uh, it is estimated that over one million people died in the conflict, so it was very bloody for Mexico. Mm. Uh, the revolution was hard on her father Guillermo, who had taken portraits of the ousted government, and work became harder to come by as the war raged on. So he didn't necessarily agree with their politics, mm. but, you know. There was work there for him. Exactly, from a high-paying client. So he And uh, also when there's a civil war happening, people aren't really thinking about their glamour shots, you know? No. It's when... Well, most people aren't. Yeah, that's what sets you apart, Matt. That does set me apart. It's the first thing you do is take a selfie. <laughs> that's the first thing you do. World War Three selfie. Every, the beginning of every financial year. Mm. Uh, I get a glamour shot and the following week I do as well and so on and so forth. Every week I get mm-hmm. one. 52. <laughs> it's not week. really relevant when I, the financial year starts, but that's sort of when in my head yeah, I reset. You, for sure, yep. And then I start getting one every week from then on like I was doing. Yes, the, the previous, previous financial, financial year. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. But, I mean, that's just how I do business. Absolutely, and that's why you're the savviest businessman. Mm-hmm. The savviest businessman. Yeah. Why do you think I'm the one sitting on a gold throne? Yeah, it is weird that he BYO. Yeah, I've chair. often wondered that. Now I know. Yeah, it makes sense. It's the selfie thing. It's the selfie thing. <laughs> in her later life, Frida would often claim that she was born in 1910, three years after her actual birth, because that's the first year of the revolution, so she would be associated with that historic event. Oh. That's weird. That's why I say I was born in 1990, because the Pies won the AFL Grand Final that year. That's incredible that you know that. Thank you. First ever AFL Grand Final it was the VFL the year before, I think. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I heard pies and I was like, this is interesting. <laughs> and then you said it was about football and I said, this is not interesting. <laughs> uh, at the age of six, Frida contracted polio. That's she, not good. It's not good, but she recovered and unlike some was able to walk afterwards, but it did leave her right leg thinner than the left which she uh, disguised by wearing long skirts. Mm. Her peers maliciously nicknamed her Peg Leg, though she did find some solace in the disease. She later recalled, My papa and mama began to spoil me a lot and love me more. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Pity. Pity. <laughs> well, and the next sentence is, Her father, who suffered epilepsy, bonded with her over her having an illness. Right. Right. So okay. that's maybe why. That makes sense. Well, that's nice. I think that is a, a, a totally... <laughs> Totally nice thing for her to be the favourite. Oh, now I'm being patronised. Mm. I mean, she could have been an arsehole who had polio. Uh, but I don't think she was. Exactly. I don't think we're about to find out she I wasn't. Think she's just Apart a nice from the person. weird date of birth thing where yeah. she wanted to be she wanted to be three years younger to associate herself with the war. But also everything else I've heard about her has been well pretty neutral to be wouldn't honest. Wouldn't you love to be three years younger, Matt? Yes. Well, on the scale of Matt's lifetime, it makes no difference. That's a drop. True, in the it's ocean. a blip. Yeah. yeah. Speck of dust, you know? We're all just dust in the wind, Jess. Mm. Matt's getting deep over there. First yeah. selfies on the financial year. <laughs> <laughs> in, in 1922, Carlo was enrolled in the Preparatoria, one of Mexico's premier schools. This senior high school had only just begun enrolling female students, and subsequently, out of the 2,000 enrolled there, she was one of only 35 girls. Wow. 
She was also famously outspoken and older than her classmates as she started school late due to having polio when she was younger. I was going to say, it was like, this. she's older now, but that's cool. That's fine. Good for her. Well, she's 15. Yeah, right. Old. Yeah. I mean, the best is behind her. Big time. At this school, she first met the famous Mexican muralist Diego Rivera. Oh, that's a good name. That's a good name. Diego. Uh, Rivera at that time was working on a mural called The Creation on the school campus. According to FridaCarlo.org, she told a friend she will marry him someday. Oh, Okay. But more on Diego later. Oh, does she marry him someday, perhaps? Did she set up that website herself? <laughs> she may have. Dot org. I didn't see that written anywhere else. That's why I thought I should source it in case. She got, she got a website early. That's what you got to do. You got it. You got to get it. And well, she get... didn't get early enough to get dot .com. But she didn't want uh, a dot .com because she just wants to spread the word. Right. Oh, like about Frida Kahlo. Organisationally. Dot .org. Gotcha. Mm. She's not a dot .com. But... <laughs> But she's definitely not a .net. Oh, God, no. Oh. Yuck. Bargain basement, am I right? Ugh. And even worse if it's a .net.au. Oh. Oh. Is there even... .net.au .biz. Oh. .asshole. Oh. .fucking idiot. Yeah. That's... .org. <laughs> Can someone buy that for us? <laughs> <laughs> We've had bumhouse.org. Appreciate that. So good. <laughs> Bum. What fun. <laughs> Yeah, sadly, fun. Fun, funhouse.org was taken. But Bumhouse, that was, that was free. <laughs> uh, probably the most significant event of her young life occurred on the 17th of September, 1925. Carla and her boyfriend, Alejandro Gomez Arias. Oh. I'm enjoying saying these. Alejandro, they're on their way home from school when the wooden bus they were riding collided with a streetcar. A wooden bus? A wooden bus. Why? How is the bu- Why? Because it's 1925 in Mexico City. Good point. Everything was made out of wood back then. Right, do go on. Uh, it collided with a streetcar, as we call them, tram. Ah. Wooden, Aleja- wooden tram, we call them. Yep, sorry. Alejandro described it as, the bus burst into a thousand pieces. As a result of the accident, Frida suffered several injuries. Oh, a, my God. A broken spinal column. Oh. Broken collarbone. Broken ribs. Broken pelvis. 11 fractures in her right leg. Oh. A crushed and dislocated right foot. Every, dis- every bone, basically. Dislocated shoulder. Sounds like she busted into a thousand pieces. Oh. Yeah. Also, an iron handrail pieced her abdomen oh. and in her Fuck. uterus. What? That went fully through ah. her. So she was really injured. Oh. Yeah, no shit, Dave. We had that in all the broken bones. She was Vlad the didn't Impaled. Ma- yeah, didn't yeah. imagine that her uterus was impaled. Also, I broke my collarbone, so I can definitely Me too. So. Where are you guys? Relate. I've never heard this story. Was like it at the same th- same event? Yeah. I imagine. We broke our collarbone. <laughs> you smashed into each other? How did you break yours? When I was very young, I think I was about two or three, uh, I was playing uh, some sort of a horse game with my sister, mm. running around the blue stones in the backyard. We're pretending to be horses? Yeah. I think like I think maybe I was, I can't remember, there was something like there was a rope mm. and one of us was like running as a ho- I can't remember. But anyway, some... I tripped on something and I went collarbone first under the blue stones. <laughs> don't worry, my collarbone will break my fall. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I don't know if there's a true or not, but I was told at some point that it's the only bone in the body that heals stronger than before. It's very, very common in little kids. Right. Because. So t- are they just trying to spin it as a good thing? May I guess so. This is what Maybe. I'm told. Quite often it will break during birth, which oh. did happen to me. And so then when I was about 18 months old, mum... Uh, put me on the bed while she was just putting on her socks and I was jumping up and down on the bed and playing and I just ran straight off the edge of the bed and fell and broke my collarbone. Crack. Cracked it. Right. And I still blame her for being negligent. Uh, get cold feet, mum. Mm. Uh, I think I know who the favourite parent might be, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> the one who hasn't fractured your collarbone. Still, mm. Yeah, right. Well, I'm still working away on the favourite sibling. So. Yeah. The one that smashed you playing horse. <laughs> They're out. Doesn't want to comment. Does not want to comment. Mm, equal, all equal first. Interesting. Anyway, sorry. So, so she's broken Fr- into she's, a million pieces. And according to Vanity Fair, somehow in the impact, Frida's clothes had been yanked off and she was left completely nude. How? How does that happen? Even more freakish, her boyfriend recalled someone in the bus, probably a house painter, had been carrying a packet of powdered gold. This package broke and the gold fell all over the bleeding body of Frida. So she looks like this crazy mess, uh, I guess, but still artistic in a way because she's 
naked. She's got a pole going through her. Okay. She's covered in oh, gold. I mean, it's, it's, don't it's ever like say pole going yeah, it's like through a, It's again. like an installation. Oh, and the bus and art. the tram and the bus is just like sp- spread Smashed. around it. Yeah, that's, I hope someone got a photo. I've not seen a photo. That would have been an amazing shot. Color photography back then in twenty five? No, no. Jess would know. Studied photography. <laughs> mentioned a box. I could have been wrong. Box camera, brownie. Box brownie. <laughs> I reckon that some people would have like bits of color. How do you? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to. Bits of colour just sounds weird. Uh, the uh, the accident left her in a great deal of pain, and she spent three months recovering in a full body plaster cast. Oh. Uh, she did recover from her injuries and eventually was able to walk again, but she was in extreme pain for the rest of her life. As a result of the accident, during the following thirty years, she had as many as thirty five surgeries, mainly on her back, her right leg, and her right foot. Jesus. Poor thing. Just wow. think back to like. Imagine going back 90 years in medical science so are, as well. Yeah. So it's not, not good. A lot of the time I read that that she'd have an operation on her back and it would actually leave her in more pain than she had been in because like, it was a bit of a gamble. Back yeah. Then. Well, even now, I mean, if you're in an accident that bad, you'll... Yeah. It's amazing that she lived at all. Yeah. Back, yeah. yeah. But you hear about people with chronic back pain that just can't figure out yeah. how to fix you it. You can't fix it. Wow. Many years later, Frida talked about her accident. So this is a quote from her. I remember it was the 17th of September, 1925. Shortly after we, Frida and Alejandro, had entered the bus, the collision happened. First we were in another bus, but I had lost a little umbrella. We got off to look for it. That's why we got on that bus, which mutilated me. So it's like a chance thing. I mean, it's all chance things, but, yeah, that's a weird little... uh, It'd be the worst having that little thing in your head, like, why'd you go for the fucking umbrella, damn it? So it's one of those things that just shaped her for the rest of her life, arguably with good and bad consequences. Mm. The bad, obviously, the terrible pain that right. it inflicted on her. But the good was that whilst in bed recovering for three months with nothing else to do to occupy her time, she began to paint. Her mother had a, a special easel made for her so she could paint uh, in bed while still in the cast, and her father lent her his box of oil paints and some brushes. She started to paint a, a self-portraits of herself, something that would become a recognisable motif of her work. And she later said, I paint myself because I am alone and I am the subject I know best. Hmm. Makes sense. I get that. I'm alone. So she starts to paint. Jess, you're here with us. I just stare in the mirror sometimes. Like, what are you fucking doing? What are you doing? Who are you? Who are you? What are you doing here? What are you doing? What do you, what want? you, what do you want? Did we get an answer? No. It's very frustrating. <laughs> All they say is... What do you want? I say, I'm the pizza delivery man. <laughs> That'd be $18. Can I have the money, please? I say, I am so sorry. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Keep the oh. change. <laughs> Good day. Oh, it's that not a happy ending. And I look at the pizza and say, what the fuck? What are you doing here? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Margarita, I didn't order you. But I'm going to eat you. <laughs> I love pizza. Yeah, you fucking do. Man, I, I love, love it. <coughs> pizza and Mexican. Could they're my two faves. Yeah, they're my two faves. And Ita- well, okay, Italian is pizza. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Or as they call it in Italy, Mexican. It's a very confusing system. So confusing. Those wacky Italians. They're wacky, aren't they? They're bloody wacky. But I love them. Can't help it. Love their, their cuisine. Oh, their cuisine. <laughs> oh, but listen, Mo. <laughs> oh. Molto bene. Oh, oh. Now you speak my language. <laughs> Fucked was, Italian. That's what I speak. There was an ad for Subway a few years ago that always annoyed me because he, um, he it was for the Italian meatball sub and he would say Molto delicioso. And I was like, <laughs> that's not no, that's not good. I'm trying to fuck it up on purpose. That's lame. That's Who would bad. do that? Yeah, <laughs> nah, lol. Anyway, Dave, oh, do go on. Uh, so more. So she started to paint. Started to paint. She's good. She painting. Oh, what's she doing? She painting. She painting herself. Do you believe that thing about her being covered in in gold? That sounds like a myth. I'm not sure. I believe it. It's a great story. 100%. I mean, I believe it. That's real good. Uh, You've convinced me. Before we started, Dave said he, he hoped I would get a little bit hyper because I have not slept. And it's happening. Here we go. <laughs> Jess is on the radio now, you guys, but in the middle of the night. Yeah. So when Dave and I are asleep, Jess is working. Then when Dave and I are awake and working, Jess is working. And then when we've got some spare time later on, we do this podcast. And then after that, Jess goes back to work. It's pretty fucked. 
But, um, for Jess, for me and Dave, so oh, it's sleeping real well. Nine hours and nine. I'm getting. Is that what you're getting? Nine? Yeah, nine hours. Oh, gosh. Nine. Please, thank you. That's unheard of. Not now. Not in our bed, that which we share. Which we share. Contractually. Bloody cuties. Anyway, sorry, I keep derailing. So she's panicking. So more on the artist Diego Rivera. I mentioned earlier. Diego, he returns. Rivera was born in uh, 1886. So he's older. He's older. An older man, 20 years older. Yes. He began drawing as a child and went on to study art at uh, the Mexican Academy. He travelled to Europe where he befriended a number of famous and influential painters, including Pablo Picasso. Oh, yeah. And he even gave the emerging uh, Cubism style a go. I'll have a crack. I'll have a crack. But the Mexican Revolution had an effect on him and he wanted to reflect the lives of the working class and the native peoples of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So he developed an interest in making murals during a trip to Italy, finding inspiration in the Renaissance frescoes. He was actually the inspiration behind Muriel's wedding. Really? Yeah. The ABBA, ABBA themed musical mm. comedy of Australia's early 90s. Mm. Mm. Was it really ABBA themed? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, the whole soundtrack was ABBA. There you go. Come on, Dave. We're learning together here. No, we knew that one. You're sorry. learning. So I'm sorry that I haven't seen an ABBA musical. Well, oh, it's not I mean, an it's ABBA not bit... musical. <sighs> anyway, ABBA that's was... Mamma Mia. Yeah. Which it's I have a, seen. A masterpiece. Oh. I actually have not seen You'll it. be looking forward to the sequel then. Oh, my God. That looks like absolute horseshit. Muriel's Wedding 2, <laughs> which they confusingly called Mamma Mia the sequel. <laughs> it's very confusing. I'm sorry, very confusing. everyone. confusing. Anyway, so I'm so sorry. Diego. So he returned to his homeland. So he's, he, he's like, I want to I paint murals. Yep. He returned to his homeland and he received funding from the government to create a series of giant murals about the country's people and the country's history on the walls of public buildings. So in public, m on a massive scale. Public where, Picassos. Public Picassos. Where people could, where people could enjoy <laughs> the art. <laughs> so he thought that art didn't belong in like a museum for the elite. He wanted the working class, everyone to be able to see it. Like Jimmy Barnes. Yep. Jess is making several references to the overseas people are like, who are these people? Google it, guys. You've got Google over there. Don't Google Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy Barnes. Working Scottish class born. man. He's Scottish born. Famous song in Australia. Okay. You're all caught up. See, Dave, was that so hard? It was Sorry for by having fun. Working class man. I think it was written by uh, an American musician who from, um, what's that band with the, the uh, songs that they sang on uh, Glee? Oh, wow. Fuck, Boston or Chicago, one of those ones? Close. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Journey? Journey. That's oh, it. It was written by, the, yeah, written by the Journey guy. Working Class Man, I believe, was written by a guy from Journey. Really? Yeah. Does that blow your mind? Yes. <laughs> Blue <laughs> denim in his veins. Sorry. It seems Jess like such an Aussie now. song, but it's, yeah, it wasn't even written by an Australian. Typical. <laughs> I'll just I'll just quietly bring it back to Mexico. <laughs> where I'm excited. Public Picasso. I'm excited about getting away from fucking Barnsey. Well, I'll, some I'll bring it back. Getting some real culture. <laughs> no offense, Jimmy. I like, I like Jimmy. Uh, so he returned to his homeland. He's doing these giant murals. A larger than life figure, as well as a tall and round man. Uh, Diego Rivera is one of the most famous artists of his day. It is now one of the most famous Mexican artists of the 20th century, if not the most famous. Art was one thing he was famous for. The other was womanizing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Politely called womanizing. Okay. He was very famous for fucking. Right. He'd already, be, already been married twice, first to Russian artist Angelina Beloff and then to Mexican model and novelist Guadalupe Marin before he first met Frida. She was just a schoolgirl during their first encounter. Rivera was painting his first government commission, a giant 1,000 square feet mural called Creation. Whoa. For scale, the figures in the piece are over 12 feet high. Wow. The people in it. Holy so shit. So he, giant, he paints on a massive scale. Uh, the mural is located in the Bolivar Auditorium of the school that Frida was studying at. During the painting of the mural... Uh, Rivera felt compelled to carry a pistol with him at all times to protect himself from the right-wing students because he's extremely left-wing. He's part of the Communist Party. And so he, uh, he had a gun with him at all times. But the person he had to watch out most for was Frida. Uh, this story comes from Diego's autobiography called uh, My Art, My Life, published after his death. I love it. I love it. <laughs> my art, <laughs> my life. 
Mm. And the cover is just him, black and white, and he's holding a rose and the rose is yellow. Oh, it's beautiful. And on the back, the rose is withered and dying. Yes, art. Art. That is art. We get art, guys. We get it. God, we're arty. Well, I don't know if I get art, but I get what I like. Which mm. is art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you like all I, art. I confused myself in the middle there. <laughs> uh, Rivera, so this is a story from his biography. Rivera was having an affair with one of his models that had been uh, nicknamed Nahui. They were banging in the auditorium in front of the painting, which is so amazing. So he's at a school painting. He takes time to have sex publicly. Like, you know, it's the students aren't in the auditorium at the time. Sure. But, but people can come in. Well, that's, he, that's how he likes it. That's the way. Uh, so they were banging in the auditorium in front of the painting and the young Frida Kahlo had snuck in up the back of the auditorium. She laughingly... <laughs> snuck him up the back. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> she laughingly yelled out, On guard, Diego, here comes Lupe, Lupe being his wife. Rivera turned around uh, but could see no one because Frida hid after she yelled out at, at the guy. Lupe did then arrive with his lunch and thus he was not caught mid-act with his model. Oh. Uh, over, over different days, the hidden voice continued to taunt him and play pranks on him. Rivera writes this quote from that book. While painting, I suddenly heard from behind one of the colonial pillars in the spacious room, the voice of an unseen girl. Teasingly, she shouted, on guard, Diego, Nahui is coming, the other woman. Uh, but she wasn't coming. He was just, uh, she was just fucking, fucking around with his old artist. Then one day, Frida stormed into the auditorium where Diego was painting and asked the artist if she could watch him paint. He said, of course, and she watched him paint in silence for several hours. After a few hours, Rivera's wife, Guadalupe, appeared and became jealous. Probably fearing that her husband was likely to have an affair with a young girl, Guadalupe began abusing her. Frida appeared to take no notice of the grown woman and just silently ignored her, which at first enraged Guadalupe, but her strength endeared herself. Guadalupe said, look at that girl. Small as she is, she does not fear a tall, strong woman like me. I really like her. (laughs) (laughs) What a roller coaster! Yeah, wow. The young Frida stayed for about three hours. When she left, she, all she said was "good night," and then she walked out. God, she did a real Perkins. That's classic Perkins. She really she turned on her, and then just changed her mind. Well, I wasn't sure if classic Perkins was being abused by an older woman, <laughs> <laughs> yes. sitting quietly and being abused. Wait, so this is this has all happened after the accidents and stuff? Yeah. So all that happened when she no, was sorry. still at school. So oh, no, me, we're flashing bef- back. This is before right. the accident. I was before. Yeah, great. So, yeah, because there are two, two uh, events that sort of shaped her life, her artistic life. One is the accident and two is probably meeting Diego. Mm. I'm watching him paint. But they would not meet again for several years and in the meantime she has the accident and then recovers mm. and starts painting herself. So she remembers this guy. So one day Diego was on top of one of the uppermost frescoes. <laughs> That's a model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are my uppermost fresco. So no, he's on top of it. Basically, he's on. Can you explain what a fresco is again? So it's like a big outdoor uh, painting that he's doing, and he's on like because it's so big, he has to stand on scaffolding. Right. So he might be three stories up, and so he's he's very high up. The Ministry of Education building one day, and he hears a girl shouting to him, "Diego, come down from there! I have something important to discuss with you." He turned his head around and looked down from the tall scaffolding. He described her in in his book. On the ground beneath me stood a girl of about 18. She had a fine, nervous body, topped by a delicate face. Her hair was long, dark, and thick eyebrows met above her nose. Already got the unibrow. They seemed like the wings of a blackbird, their black arches framing two extraordinary brown eyes. Rivera climbed down to meet the confident girl, and when when he got down, she said to him, and remember, at this point, he's probably the most famous artist in all of Mexico, and she's just some girl that's walked up to him. She said, I didn't come here for fun. I have to work to earn my livelihood. I have done some paintings which I want you to look over professionally. I want an absolute straightforward opinion because I cannot afford to go on just to appease my vanity. I want you to tell me whether you think I can become good enough of an artist to make it worth my while to go on. I brought three paintings here. Will you come and look at them? So she bought three for canvases with her and Diego agreed to examine them and he instantly liked what he saw. The canvases revealed an unusual energy of expression Precise delineation of character and true severity. He praised her work, but she knew that he was a bit of a ladies man Mm -hmm. and was sceptical of his praise and said, I have not come looking for compliments. I want the criticism of a serious man. I'm not an art lover nor an amateur. I'm simply a girl who must work for a living. He was extremely impressed by this young, confident girl in front of him. And when he asked, 
And when she asked if he, the great Mexican artist, thought that she had what it takes to be professional, he answered, in my opinion, no matter how difficult it is for you, you must continue to paint. Uh, she asked him one more favour. She asked him to come by her house and look at the rest of her paintings. He agreed, and it was only then that when she was giving her address that she said her name. It was then that he realised that he had heard of this girl before. His friend, who was the director of the National Preparatory School who'd got him to do that original uh, painting, he told her that Frida was a student and the director had spoken to Diego about her as the leader of a band of juvenile delinquents and had even considered quitting his job out of frustration, out of frustration <laughs> with Carlos' <laughs> mischief. <laughs> He then realised that this was the same girl that had came into the auditorium all those years ago and watched him paint. And this is the final quote from Rivera's biography. I said, but you are... She stopped me quickly, almost putting her hand in my mouth in her anxiety. Her eyes acquired a devilish brilliancy. Threateningly, she said, yes, so what? I was the girl in the auditorium. But that has absolutely nothing to do with now. Will you still come to my house on Sunday? I had a great difficulty not answering, more than ever... But if I showed my excitement, she might not let me come at all. So I only answered yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, wow. He was keen. He was keen. But I just admire the confidence. It's like, you know, going up to like a, like just starting out in comedy and, you know, going up to Will Anderson in our country and being like, am I good? Tell me. Tell me. I imagine that probably happens though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will Anderson, but, but, but I suppose not all of them go on to be the sort of the best of the generation. Yeah. Like, don't fuck around. Well, like, can I make a living out of this? I just need to earn money. Yeah, I love that. I'm not an art lover. Don't f- don't fuck with me. Tell me the truth. Give me an answer. That's really great. And I love how it was like he's the big star in the country, but by the end of the conversation he's nervously trying to underplay yeah. his yeah, excitement. Yeah, all right, all right. I really want to, I want to <laughs> see more. Well, he did go to a house. And he examined all the rest of her paintings and he continued to be impressed. A few days later, the pair kissed for the first time and although she was 18 and he was twice her age, neither of them felt the least bit awkward. They married four years later despite protests of Carlo's devoutly Catholic mother and uh, as a couple they were often referred to as the Elephant and the Dove, a nickname that originated when Carlo's father used to express the extreme difference in size. Rivera was 200 pounds heavier and almost a foot taller than Carlo. Wow. So they were a bit of a striking couple to to be seen. The wow. elephant and the dove. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like a pub name. Yeah. I'd, I'd go there. I'd Old call English the dove pub. an elephant, though. Yeah, that, that's more. That definitely sounds more British. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the elephant and the dove. Well, their marriage often was tumultuous. No. Why can't anyone be happy? No, they can't. Well, it's just hard to be a great artist and be happy. Yeah, so you're right. You're tortured. I, I, I'm find, understanding. That. I find that yeah. every day. Yeah. No, I, I meant, so, sorry. <laughs> it's like a, uh, no, no, we, know, we knew what you meant. Stories of these painters, you know, like. I know that, exactly what you mean. I think Jess knows what you mean. Being an artist, as being we an are. Artist. Sorry, being, being an artist. Being a great artist. We are artists. Don't I don't, I'm confused by your confusion on that, Dave. Yeah, and we understand how hard it is to be happy because you are constantly tortured by your own art. Yes. It is. These podcasts are really torturous. Like, like, <laughs> like, Tism, torture. like Tism said, mm. Mm. I've suffered for my art, now you must too. Mm. <laughs> That's a great quote. That's a good mm. line. Mm. Mm. So but they, uh, their marriage was not happy. Notoriously, both Carlo and uh, Rivera had fiery temperaments and both had numerous extramarital affairs. Diego uh, compared making love to urinating, just a necessary function. No. Oh, well, <laughs> I, mm. why get married then? If you're both just going to fuck around, just fuck around. Why get married? Mm. I know, it's true, but they're kind of each other's like muse and rock at the same time. Yeah. So they always come back to each other. Just be friends. Muse and rock. Which who's, one's the rock? Who's your muse? Uh, Jess, you're my muse. Dave, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take that, Dave. But am I a rocky piece of you're shit? You're a rocky yeah, piece of shit. Really... Very lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but you just don't understand art. You don't get why... art. Yeah, you just don't get it. Sorry, guys. I'm trying. That's why I'm doing all these bloody art reports. I know. We're trying know you're to get trying, it. Mate. But sometimes with art, it's about not trying. It's less about this. Mm. More about this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's pointing to his dick. <laughs> I was going to say it's pointing to each of his balls. <laughs> yeah, less about the left one, more about the right one. It's pointing to my heart, which is, oh. which is in my crotch. <laughs> I got that weird disorder. But isn't not getting, not understanding art 
the most artistic thing of all. Oh, well played. Yes. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Am I getting art? No. Try again. Fuck, I thought I'd got it. You Can't con your me. way to the top, mate. Yeah. Anyway, so they're both fucking around. But together, they're very productive as artists. Each regarded the other as Mexico's greatest painter. Oh. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's quite that's Each, cute. I regard both of you as Australia's greatest podcasters. I, that's silly. We are not. We're not. The, no. You're wrong. Everyone knows Top who, 10, who sure. <laughs> it's Mike, the Mike Check podcast. It's the best. Yeah. Mm. Australia's greatest podcasters. Mm-hmm. Alexi right. Toliopoulos. Mm-hmm. Cameron James. Mm-hmm. Swing, swing. I think they're finished, actually. What a hole they've left. They've got through the whole oeuvre of Mike Myers. Of Mike Myers. Oof, yeah. he'll, make, he'll keep making movies. Yeah, thankfully. So every three years they'll be able to release a new episode of Mike Check. Diego actually welled up with tears of pride when Picasso once admired the eyes in a painting of Frida's. Oh. So they are... Very proud of each other. Very proud and very supportive of each other. Oh, that's really nice because you'd almost think, well, and I'm sure it happens with artists of any any nature, but when you're in a relationship and you do the same type of work, there'd be like a competitiveness. So it's nice if they're they're supportive. Mm. Sure, fuck around then. That's fine. Great. (laughs) Just give them permission to fuck Yeah, good on you guys. They also shared an interest in radical politics and Marxism. I'm going to say rapping. Wasn't rapping. They also invented Mexican rap <laughs> in the 1930s. What would that sound like? Please don't do it. Don't. Hola. <laughs> oh, okay. So sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hola. That's silly, Dave. Uh, Rivera, so they're radical politics and Marxists, and his paintings depict like uh, you know radical things often. The Sickles. Sickles. And the man sort of the fucking, man. The man fucking over the worker. But the, the weird part is he copped a lot of criticism uh, for taking money from the wealthy elites who were actually paying for him to paint the murals, mm. and he was quite wealthy. Mm. Yeah, but fuck the man so and he, the system. So he actually got kicked out of the Marxist party, oh. the Communist Party in Mexico. Because he's totally involved in capitalism. Well, also he's very outspoken. So I think he told a few people to go fuck themselves and they were like, you've got to go. Right. Uh, in the 1930s, Rivera was invited to the USA to complete a number of murals there. Ironically, he worked for American capitalists on large commissions with leftist themes. So people like Henry Ford and all these billionaires were like, yeah, come and do your Marxist stuff on our buildings. Which is, it's a bit strange. Hmm. Uh, the couple travelled through California where Rivera painted murals and then moved on to New York City where Rivera was invited to have a retrospective of his artwork of the fairly recently opened uh, Museum of Modern Art. Oh, cool. MoMA. Having a retrospective while still alive was almost unheard of at the time. And it was a great honour and sign of his status as an artist. Where's MoMA? Is that in the Guggenheim? <laughs> no, I think they're two separate museums. <laughs> I know Guggenheim <laughs> from Seinfeld. George, George, when he's blagging, said he... Blagging. He was the architect who designed the... Oh, Art Vandalay. <laughs> the annex of the Guggenheim. <laughs> You know that little annex at the back? <laughs> that was mine. Guggenheim's just a lot of fun to say. It, it is. Good. What? Where? So I missed. Where's? Where is MoMA? That's in America, though, isn't it? In New York, New York. City, New York. And the Guggenheim is in mm, New York. Well, I mean, there's a lot of Guggenheims. There's yeah. one in Venice, and mm, but please go on. <laughs> Have you just forgotten the title of our show? It's not called <laughs> "But Please Go On." Oh, that would have been better. It's quite good, actually. Yeah. Welcome Is it too to, late to change? To another episode of But Please Go On. <laughs> but Please Go On. But it's B-U-T-T, comma, yeah. but. Please yeah, go on. because butts are funny. Because the reporter is always the oh, butt. Okay. Funny at butts. <laughs> oh, not. Not again. Not again. Not again. Uh, so he's got his little, uh, I say little, it's a, a big deal that he's got his um, retrospective. Then they moved to Detroit for a year, did some, uh, some art there, and then they made their way back to, so he's doing all these murals. She's um, accompanying him, but also doing her own artwork. It's a bit sad because at the time it's more like, oh, you also paint because he's like this world famous artist. Right. But t- but he would be, I imagine he's telling people about her. Oh, she, he would say stuff like, she's better than I am. Right. That kind of thing, yeah. But she's sort of living in his shadow at this point in, in their life. Uh, they moved back to New York City in 1933 and this time their stay was surrounded by controversy. Commissioned by... Uh, Nelson Rockefeller from the wealthy Rockefeller family, 
Rivera created a mural entitled Man at the Crossroads, the RCA building at the Rockefeller Center. Rockefeller halted the work on the project after Rivera included a portrait of communist leader Vladimir Lenin in the mural. So he said to him, you can do whatever you like. Do one of your awesome, like, um, he's a big art lover, Nelson Rockefeller. He's like, just do whatever you want to do. And then he puts like a famous communist figure in there and he's like, don't do that. (laughs) I said anything, but not that. And he was given the ultimatum, Rivera, of either removing Lenin or having the work stopped completely. Rivera stuck by his guns and refused to compromise his artistic vision. And as a result, he was paid in full, but then the artwork was demolished. That oh. sounds like a win-win yeah, for didn't, him. Yeah, didn't have to do the work, still got the money. But I guess as In the an end, art- isn't that what art's all about? But as an artist, it's like having one of your children drilled off the wall. No, it's not. You've got no. money. And also that child was only semi-formed, so... It's more like, you know, jizzing into a sock. (laughs) But getting paid in full. The regret on your face. I enjoyed that. I'll I'll probably get a text message about that comment tomorrow. Hey, mate, could you edit out that bit where I said jizz in a sock? (laughs) Yeah, I didn't didn't feel like that was nice. Homesick in the United States and sick of associating with capitalists because Frida would uh, often go out to these balls and things and she'd have to associate with people like Henry Ford and people that she doesn't agree with their ideals at all. Uh, She persuaded the reluctant Rivera to return to Mexico. And once there, he retaliated by having an affair with her sister, Christina. In response to this familial betrayal, Carlo cut off most of her trademark long hair. Uh, Desperately wanting to have a child, she again experienced heartbreak when she miscarried in 1934. Because it, uh, she got pregnant a few times and it sort of became apparent that because of her injuries as a young young woman that she probably wasn't able to. Yeah, her uterus was impaled. Yep. So pregnant. I'm not shocked that, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure maybe, but I'm not all that surprised. Uh, devastated by this, Frida began painting herself wounded and bleeding. Uh, when he did return, uh, Diego recreated the mural that Rockefeller had torn down. He'd secretly had photos taken of it, and he redid the mural on the wall of the Palacio de Bellas Artes, which is one of the most famous buildings in Mexico City. The new version included the portrait of Lenin that he was uh, in trouble for, but this time uh, he was alongside Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, the authors of the Communist Manifesto, so two very famous communists. Oh, and I hope he's, has he got uh, Rockefeller in there as well, like they're shaking hands. That would be so <laughs> no, good. That would be awesome. Arms around each other. <laughs> no, he didn't include that. Pointing at each other, I'm best mate. Love <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he would have fucking hated it. Uh, but he got the last laugh there. So he got paid in America, went home, did it in Mexico in like the most famous building in Mexico City and got to do it e- you know, even more artistically. Uh, never a traditional union, Carla and Rivera kept separate but adjoining homes and studios that were connected by a bridge. <laughs> so they had their own... It's got a moat, studio. obviously. Yeah. I'll only let you in if I feel like it. And the troll underneath allows it. Yeah. If you answer these questions, three. (laughs) Yes, what are the questions? Number one. What is your favourite (laughs) colour? Easy. Blue. I live in a blue house. I'm sure my favourite colour is blue. Question two. What is your least favourite colour? Yellow. And that scummy fuckhead over in Europe whose paintings... Maybe don't exist yet. Thank off. No, they definitely they exist. They definitely exist because I know timelines because he was in the 18, 17, 18, yeah, 18, 50s. 50s. Mm. Mm. Question. I'm, I'm with my little elven helper. Yeah, why do you have a helper? Huh? Anyway, so we, so do, we do it. So Dave, we do, it? do go on. Am I allowed in or not? No. You only got two out of three right. The third one didn't even, you didn't even get it. Uh, active communist sympathisers, Carlo and Rivera befriended Leon Trotsky as he sought political sanctuary from Joseph Stalin's regime in the Soviet Union. He was an early Russian revolutionary leader but ultimately lost out to Stalin who wanted his enemy dead. And so he had to flee from the Soviet Union and Russia but only one country would take him and that was Mexico. Trotsky is a great name. Trotsky. Trotsky. The fa- fa- founding father of Trotskyism. Right. It's a good... And galloping. No, that's slow galloping. 
Dave, what he's getting at there is <laughs> trotting. I know, I love it. Did you get it? I just left him. Did Dave, you get the joke there? Dave. Trotsky. Uh, th- this is my art. Yeah. Confusing Horses long trot. bows. <laughs> Well, I get it now. It can't be that confusing if I got it. I think I get it now. I get art. Do you get art? I get Matt's art. I don't think I get Jess's yet. Yeah. Mine's pretty complicated. Pretty highbrow? Yeah, it's pretty highbrow art. <laughs> but is it one unibrow? Nah. High unibrow? Nah. Okay. He it's does not three, get it at it's all. It's three brows. Come on, mate. So back to Trotsky. Initially, Trotsky lived with Rivera and then at Carlo's home in the Casa Azul where they reportedly had an affair, because of course they did. Of course they did. Trotsky and his wife then moved to another house in uh, Coyoacan, where later, basically his wife found out about the, the affair and was like, we got to get out of here. Possibly bad because he was later assassinated with an ice pick. Oh. Sorry, what? But the weapon melts. Trotsky, so Stalin, who was in charge of the Soviet Union, was sent out his little uh, operatives to take out Trotsky. So and he got ice picked in Mexico. Yeah, in Mexico City. So uh, did it have an esky with them? Bring the ice pick. <laughs> I think what Jess is saying there is that it was good with a pick made of ice. <laughs> I'm imagining. Oh well, the perfect this weapon because time, uh, it I'm... melts and then there's no DNA. <laughs> That's left. why I no, said the weapon melts. No fingerprints. Do you ever listen? Just listen, Dave. Yeah. That's part of the art, man. Fucking hell. Try the art of listening to your friends. Or colleagues, I don't know about friends. No. Basically, he was sitting at a desk and he just got struck in the head with a, an ice pick. And uh, he, he lived for a day, but then he died. Yeah, once it melted. Yeah, the ice was the ice the only thing keeping him alive. <laughs> uh, Carla reportedly also had an affair with Trotsky's assistant. So he's having affairs all over the place. Another one of her famous affairs was with the famous dancer Josephine Baker. She had relationships with several prominent women, including fellow painters Georgia O'Keefe, Jacqueline Lamber, as well as actresses Dolores Del Rio and Paulette Goddard. Hmm. So wow. both men and women, heaps and heaps of them. And so, and all this time, Diego's also having dozens and dozens of his affairs. All she- A-listers as well, by the sounds of it. Only the best. Nothing but the best. Mm. I'll only have an affair with an A-lister. Yeah. Which one? Which A-lister? Yeah. I think she's saying any A-lister. Any A-lister. Oh, sorry. Go, gotcha. Well, no, any. not any A-lister, but A-lister is the minimum. Yeah. The velvet rope will only be lifted to Jess's boudoir uh, if you're on the A-list. Mm-hmm. But if you are? As in your name starts with A. Oh. Aaron A. Aronson. Yep, come on in. <laughs> He's obviously top of the list. Aardvark, come on in. <laughs> yeah, Woodburn and Aardvark, no doubt about that. Unless his name was Greg. <laughs> Does the have he to... can fuck off. Does the Aardvark have to be called Aaron? Yeah. Doesn't have to be called Aaron. Could be called... Alan. 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 Andre. Ryu. No. Really? You'd say um, no to the... You're not getting it. <laughs> the he doesn't name. get it. You don't get it. <laughs> it's so cute how he doesn't get it. It's like this is... He can hear the words, but he just does. doesn't come from the girl. Oh, he's got no idea. Look, any person who would not have an affair with Andre Ryu is, the is frankly bar. an idiot, in my opinion. Mm-mm. I will not be judged by someone who would say no to the great violinist, who, as far as I can see, stands up the front of other people playing violin and just sort of waves his hair around. <laughs> yeah, it's the hair. I don't like the hair. And the hair's a bit weird, but he is a massive stud. No. <laughs> No doubt about that. Do you think he has a six pack under there? He oh, definitely yeah. does. Oh, he'd be he? ripped as. I reckon I reckon he wears tuxedos that once he gets home into the boudoir with you know, whatever. Mrs. Rio. Or whoever he has in there. Uh he would just have those rip off tuxes. <laughs> I reckon one <laughs> movement and he is in a thong. <laughs> leopard print. Leopard print. Pink leopard print. American style G banger. Yeah. An American style. Yeah, yeah. not an Australian style thong. The oh, God, sorry. I, was, I was just confused. <laughs> How many different types of thong are there? This is awesome. Didn't know. Yeah, stars and stripes. That's a bald <laughs> eagle <laughs> on the cock pocket. Or whatever you call the bit at the front. The cock pocket. Right. <laughs> you were right the first time. When you're right, you're right. The cocket. The cocket. All right, sorry, you were wrong. 
<laughs> when you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, for all the people who have come to this episode just for Frida, um, well done for getting this far. I doubt you have. Sorry. We've talked a lot about it. We have. There's no way they would have made it past the five-minute mark. The Frida, Frida freaks out there. No way. Frida maniacs. In 1938, uh, Frida had her first solar exhibition in New York. Solar? In- solo. Entirely powered by the sun. <laughs> yeah, she was very ahead of her time. Oh, she's good. I told you she cared about people. She also cares about the environment, Jess. Ah, she's amazing. Wow, uh, amazing. 1939, she exhibited in Paris where she befriended a lot of the great, uh, the day's great artists. The Louvre purchased her painting The Frame, making it the first work by a 20th century Mexican artist to be purchased by an internationally re- renowned museum. That's incredible. So a big, quite a big deal. Mm. In 1939, Carlo divorced Rivera. No. About time. Oh, okay. Well. We went different ways. There's some bad and good news for one of you. (gasps) They did not stay divorced for long because they remarried the following year in 1940. About time. (laughs) The couple continued to lead largely separate lives, both becoming involved with other people over the years. Why marry then? Because I told you they're each other's rocks. Just be buds. Yeah. Her health condition began to worsen in 1950. That year she was diagnosed with gangrene in her right foot. Fuck. uh, Fuck, she's had a rough trot. Various times she had to have her her feet removed surgically. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, and she had one of her sort of legs below the knee amputated. Bugger. Really? She's had a real bloody rough trot. Back then. I had no idea about that. Gangrene, yeah, gangrene. Was that the gangrene? Yeah, it's hard to come back from, especially back then. Yeah. Wow. They would have tried leeches and stuff probably. Oh. Uh, she, she became bedridden for the next nine months and had to stay in hospital and had several more surgeries. But with great persistence, Frida Kahlo continued to work and paint. In the year 1953, she finally achieved her dream of having a solo exhibition in Mexico. What? Well, Entirely powered by the sun. <laughs> nah, all right, good on us all. <laughs> Although she had limited mobility at the time, she was ordered by doctors to stay in bed she showed up at the exhibition's opening ceremony. She arrived by ambulance and welcomed the attendees. <laughs> celebrated That's an the, awesome. <laughs> That's fucking cool. She, and she celebrated the ceremony in a bed that the gallery set up for her, so thus good. not going against her doctor's orders. She, <laughs> That's so good. So she was in a bed the whole time. <laughs> Love it. Well played. It's real well played. Uh, one of the last things she did was she turned up at a, uh, a Marxist rally because in the last few years of their life, both her and Diego rejoined the Communist Party. They were accepted again. They patched it up. Uh, Frida Kahlo died on July 13th, 1954, at the age of 47, and she was cremated. She was only 47. Only 47. Gosh, she got a lot done. A lot done. So much done. That's incredible. Later in his autobiography, Diego Rivera wrote that the day Kahlo died was the most tragic day of his life, adding that too late he had realised that the most wonderful part of his life had been his Love for her. Fuck. He re- he married someone else the following year. <laughs> okay. That's, hey, we all grieve differently. Mm, Diego. Uh, finally. Some talk- of us grieve by marrying our fourth wife. You're right. I'm sorry. I Who am I to that. judge? Frida Kahlo's fame grew greatly after her death. This is due in part, large part, to art historian Hayden Herrera's international bestseller, Frida, a biography of Frida Kahlo, which was published in 1983. By 1984, Carla's reputation as an artist had grown to such an extent that Mexico declared her works national cultural heritage, prohibiting their export from the country. As a result, her paintings seldom appear in international auctions and comprehensive retrospectives are rare. They don't want them to leave Mexico. Right. That's cool. About a th- she, she painted about 150 paintings in her lifetime, so not that much. About a third of her entire body of work, so 55-ish, consists of self-portraits. Hmm. And what most are the rest? of those Nudes? in Melbourne Mexican restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carla has attracted popular interest to the extent that the term freedom mania has been coined to describe the phenomenon. Like the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mania was invented by Beatle mania. Uh, oh, her I face, love that as an idea. Uh, her, her face as an icon is now recognisable, as recognisable as Bob Marley or Che Guevara. In 2002, Selma Hayek was nominated for an Oscar for playing Frida Kahlo in the film Frida, based on Herrera's biography. And the 2017 Pixar film Coco, which I haven't seen but I'm interested in seeing, set in Mexico, features Mexican actress Natalia Cordova Buckley playing Carlo. Mm, that's cool. And as for Diego Rivera, he married his agent the year after Carlo's death, 
and I'm not sure if there's any relation to his numerous lovemaking, but he developed penis cancer in his 60s. Excuse me? <laughs> I have never heard of that, I don't think. <laughs> penis cancer. Is it called penis cancer? It can't be called penis <laughs> That's cancer. That's what I read. It's not called penis, penis cancer. Penis cancer. He's got yeah. cancer in his penis. Yeah. Uh, but, but he died of heart failure at the age of 70, three years after Carlo in 1957. He was 70. Hmm. And she was 47 when she died. Yep. So he was about 20 years older than her. Wow. And that is the life and times. You can't finish it on penis cancer. Can he? No. Can he do that? Uh, will he? No, he's got a fun fact. I don't want to Google it. Will he? Yes, I will. Ah, <laughs> oh, Dave. Yeah, penile cancer. I'm looking at it. Penile. Up. Oh, penile cancer. Sure. <laughs> Man, it's no joke. It's no laughing matter. It's bad. It's bad stuff. Yeah. yeah. Any oh, cancer you're right. oh, is. You think it's rare. penile cancer Guys, it's is rare. bad? Hey, I wasn't laughing Are at you it. going out on a limb there and saying penis cancer is bad? No, I'm saying it's no <laughs> laughing matter and you guys laughed a lot at penis cancer. We weren't laughing. Penis cancer. Is that how you think Jess laughs by saying penis cancer? That's not that, how I laugh, is that mate. What do you think her laugh sounds like? You think Jess laughing sounds like this? Penis cancer? Uh, it's pretty similar, actually, yeah. It is. That's actually the if you best, speed it up. That's the best impression <laughs> you've ever done of Jess's laugh. Wow. Penis what a story. Cancer. What an incredible woman. There's so what? much in there. I actually really didn't know much about her at all. I think I knew she was an artist, and that's probably about it. Very cool. Well, well, what a life. Thank you to Hannah for suggesting that topic. I'm glad it was in the hat because it was cool to do a Mexican one when I'm going there next week, and I will try and get a photo of myself in front of the blue house. Be awesome. No, Dave, you got to get a self-portrait in front of the Blue House. Thank you. In honour of Frida. And I'll do with it your butt out. naked <laughs> like her dad, just like Guillermo would have wanted. Covered with gold. <laughs> just like Carl Carlo. Or a.k.a. Guillermo Carlo. Oh, Guillermo. Carl, Carl Carlo. All right, guys, there's only one other thing left to do on this week's episode, and that is, of course, thank everyone that supports the show through Patreon. Oh, Patreon, yeah. Patreon. Dot com slash to go on pod. <laughs> it's my favourite time of the year and the episode. The episode, that's right. Everyone who supports the show at patreon.com, you really do support the show. And uh, by chucking in one, two, five, ten dollars a month, you can uh, get rewards. $125 a month. Dollars a month. Wow. We do have our old mate Schubert. Oh, yeah. The third. Please. Who, uh, of course, uh, gives us $100 a month. What a guy. You're really is the patron saint of the pod. Mm. Uh, but everyone who supports the show, we'd like to say thank you. And we give you bonus episodes, uh, access to tickets in advance, all that kind of stuff. But also we'd like to give shout outs to some of you now. We Now. We'd love to do that right now. <laughs> now, now, now. Um, could I kick it off uh, by thanking a good friend of the show from Swansea in Wales, Tom Panton. Panton, Tom. <laughs> do Panton. Do Panton. He's like everyone else, Tom. He puts one pant on. <laughs> That's good. What if we uh, say That's what colour house Tom would live in? Oh, oh, Tom would live in a magenta house. I oh. mm-hmm. You were about to say that, weren't you, Jess? Yes. Yeah. thought so. Yep. He's magenta all the way. 100%. Tom Magenta Panton is what he was known as in, in primary school. And, Tom, thank you so much for living in Wales, but choosing to live in a place that we could pronounce. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank and you. Uh, hopefully the Swansea boys... Uh, doing well in the soccer football uh, competition. Go Swansea boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, d- I feel like I should have noticed this name before, <laughs> uh, but from L- Rock Ledge, Florida, and this guy is a Rock Ledge. Oh, is it Flow Rider? Flow Rider. Oh. The Rock Ledge. No, it's even better than that. It's Junk Puncher. <laughs> <laughs> junk Puncher. Puncher. First name Junk. Second name, Puncher. Does anyone remember writing junk a Christmas card? I do not remember. I don't remember that. I'm guessing uh, he's going by a different name potentially. I hope I want he either means junk puncher like he punches junk or his junk has got a puncher mm. and is, is leaking air. And oh, is, no. Is oh, you got to flat. You got to get. You shouldn't have leaking junk. No. Pun- pun- you know, got to patch it up. What yeah. colour house does junk puncher live in? Oh. Uh, it's got to be a White House. It's a White House. He lives in the White House. He's the president. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I'm confident the junk puncher 
could be Donald Trump. An That's alias. the kind of name he'd go under, I reckon. Mm, mm. Junk puncher. May I thank some people? Pussy grabber <laughs> or junk puncher. He had two options. He went for the f- slightly less obvious. Yeah. Is it my turn? <laughs> it is. Okay, sorry. Well, neither of you answered my question. Sorry. So. Well, I was sorry. I was distracted by junk puncher. <laughs> okay. I could not get my head around and beyond junk puncher. <laughs> I can't get him out of my head. It's a, it's, it's a, well, it's a big image. No. Well, I would like to thank from Bar Beach in New South Wales. This feels like the type of place you might enjoy, Matthew. I'd love to go to a bar beach. Yeah. Two of your favourite things yeah. in one place. Oh, the best. Paradise. I would like to thank Kaylin Rankings. Oh, where do you put her? From bar- number one for me. <laughs> number one. Always number one. Oh, top two. On the Caitlin ranking, she's my number it's one. Kaylin. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's how good Which she is. is. That's how amazing she is. She On the Caitlin rankings, she's number three. But Caitlin. Number one. On the cat, yeah, it's That's a weird fascinating. Yeah, wow. system. On the far less common ranking, she's third, but the, the, a yeah. more common name, she's one. Kaylin, the song by the band that I'm struggling to remember the name of now, Unwritten Law, that is my number two. And another one I've forgotten is number one. No, it, I'm only joking. She's number one. What colour? Oh, Kaylin. Oh, my choosing all the colours. You've given me the most basic one. I appreciate that. Lime green. <laughs> oh, yeah. interesting. Beautiful. The greenhouse. Very nice. Lime greenhouse. It's a it's a party house. It's tropical. Yeah. Oh. It's uh people are going around around there for beach parties. Oh fun. Uh they're going around there for beach bar parties. Uh-huh. They're going around there for bar beach parties. Oh, great. <sighs> Cas- um, Casa Verde. Casa Verde. Mm. And I would also like to thank from across the pond to our friend in Auckland. It's Mark Towel. Mark Towel. <laughs> well, he'd be very was, handy at the bar beach. I really. <laughs> that's good. I really enjoy when people's last names are just objects. Yeah. Like when they were naming themselves, they went, what, what are you called? Naming themselves. Towel. Mark Towel. Yeah. yeah. He sounds like a made up boyfriend from the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jane. His name's. Mark. Last Mark summer, what? Last summer we went to we got to first base. We went to first base. We went there. We went to first base. <laughs> we sat there for a week. It was great. <laughs> Beautiful tapas. Got cramp after all, but we got cramps. <laughs> spent too much. And where does Mark live? <laughs> Time there. Mark. Oh, what color house? Oh, uh, baby powder blue. Oh. oh. So a casa thul yeah. of a different color. He, he has a matching. Matching. <laughs> it was a matching um, baby powder blue tuxedo crush velvet. Oh, get out of town. Yeah. That is elegance. <laughs> and thank, thank you so much, Mark Town. I'd like to thank all the way from Devon. Oh, I love we've, Devon. we've got to go to Devon. We've got yeah, a few people in Devon, Devon, I reckon. Down the southwest, is that right, Dave? Just just east of Cornwall, I think. You're the, you're the UK geography guy because you know all the football teams, so I'll, I'll believe you on that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Devon. And around there they say stuff like, in me convoy nor of a start. No, I didn't, write, I didn't get that right. Sorry no. about that, Devon. Have another Com- crack. Come on. Always <clears throat> knows you. Convoy nor of a start. Stop. Okay. Hated that. <laughs> From Devon, I would like to thank. The accuracy you hate. Yeah, I hate, hate how, how accurate hate, that was. You hate how I'm, they I'm sound. I'm jealous. Right. Yeah. Are you jealous of them or me? Of you being able to so accurately depict I'm a, I'm that. A, I'm the voice Moifer. Moifer. Morpher. Oh, the man of a thousand morphing voices. Fuck. I would like to thank from Devon, our main man, which is, I looked it up just to make sure you were not going to get a lot of angry Devon sheer tweets, which is a lot less appetizing than Devon sheer eats. Michael Killeen. Ooh. Mm. His, uh, his house is coloured in cream. With a dollop of jam, red. Oh, nice. On top. Because that's how they do it in Devon. They do it right. Cream first on the scone, then jam. I don't want to have this argument again. I'm a jam, then cream man. Yeah, that's not that's not Devonshire tea, though. Well, that's Cornish tea. Care. Fine, then I like Cornish jam tea. Jam is a spread. It belongs on... The bread. It's more dense. Like you put that on first. What do you, what do you put oh on first? Oh, my God, first? no, I'm not having this conversation again. No. Do, do you put the dairy no. on first when you make? Is it butter first or is it jam first? Well, now you've added a third thing. Well, no, the butter no, in the oh, cream of the dairy. Stop. You put on the dairy first and mm. then the jam on top. I hate this. Okay, what I like to do is butter. No, I don't want to do jam, this in detail. Then cream. And then cream. <laughs> 
Queem. Yeah, Queem always goes on last. That's something oh, no, we that's, both agree yeah, with. We all agree yeah, with yeah, Queem. I'm pretty sure that Michael from Devon, but thank you, Michael, for your support, yeah. would agree with that. And finally, from Canada, the British Columbia part, I would like to thank Jesse Wagner or Wagner. Oh, Wagner. Wagner. Oh, Wagner. Jesse Wagner. Oh, Jesse Wagner. Oh, Jesse Wagner. Oh, Jesse Wagner. And what colour house does Jesse Wagner Is occupy? Is that your Canadian accent? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been all over British Columbia, I see. Oh, yeah. A boot. Yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. Um, so uh, Jesse's house is painted in a beautiful mix mm. of maple syrup gold. Oh, beautiful. Mm, mm. And Canadian red. God bless Canada. Mm-hmm. And God bless Jesse Wagner. 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 Thanks, Jesse Wagner. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone that supports the show. Even a dollar a month makes a big difference to us. Obviously, 10% of the difference that $10 a month makes. But there you go. We still love you. And there's a – the bonus <laughs> episode last month was a fun one we did about uh, Christmas. We yes. About the right. Yule Lads. We actually talked about the Yule Lads, which missed out on the Christmas uh, special. But, Matt, did a little – And we're going to – the next one coming up, uh, you guys don't know about, but uh, some of the listeners will know, well, the people in the – um, Patreon will know because they have been helping me put it together. That's exciting. I like it. Teamwork. Thanks, everyone. And, of course, if you want to get in contact with the show, suggest a topic, you can uh, find our link, which is our pinned tweet on Twitter at the moment, which is uh, will take you to the place where you can now fill in our form for the hat, just like Hannah did. Thank you for the Frida Kahlo episode. Or you can uh, get in contact or follow us at any time. We put up extra photos and videos and all kinds of stuff. Every week on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, all at DoGoOnPod. And if you have a question and you want to annoy us, why not drop us a line at DoGoOnPod at gmail.com. Yeah, that's the point. If you're going to be annoying, the one that you should get onto is the email. Um, Keep your tweets positive. Thank you. If you can. Facebook, Instagram, keep it all very positive. But on email, uh, email, that's where you get rid of any sort of grievances. Oh, let loose. If one of us has mispronounced a word, email it. Don't tweet it. Email don't tweet it, please. It. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have enough characters in a tweet. Mm-hmm. We don't want you having to like sort of squeeze in your sadness into a tweet. Get it mm-hmm. on the email. That's right. If you're a pedantic, you use email. <laughs> is this fun for you guys? <laughs> yeah, it is. Because Matt and I don't look at the email. <laughs> so enjoy that, Jess. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks. No, thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week with another episode. I'll be in Mexico City by that time. So look out for my photos outside La Casa Azul. But until next week, I'll say thank you and goodbye. Later. Bye. Please don't email me mean things. <laughs>